all right, so check this out. I live in rural Australia. The facts are fairly unique and too easy to identify. I'm also going to muddle the geographical details. I was bullied brutally in high school. One of the very few people who was friendly to me was a dude named Brad. We were only friends of friends, but anyone who was not making my life a misery stood out. In 1988, when I was 14, Brad was in a car accident. He died in the hospital, and he was only 18. Another boy that I knew was also killed instantly in the same accident. An inquiry found that there were issues with the roadway that were largely responsible for the accident. These had been neglected and a government body was found liable. Not long after that, the father of the other boy was arrested for and eventually convicted of multiple child sex offenses against nearly two dozen children. All in all, very sad. It's a shit show and memorable for the wrong reasons. About a year and a half later, I overdosed on medication and lapsed into a coma. I survived by dumb luck with minimal damage. I was, however, left with a small amount of permanent amnesia. Furthermore, the memories of the two years previous to the coma became very muddled. I did not and do not trust my memory from that period without external confirmation. One day, I abruptly started thinking about Brad for reasons that I did not understand. It nagged at me till I looked up his death. At first, I couldn't find any of the dozens of newspaper articles that I recalled about the events surrounding it or any official records. My memory said the accident occurred in late autumn 1989. Brad was supposed to have been taken by ambulance to City A where he died. I clearly recalled taking flowers to his grave in Town A, my hometown, which is right near the crash site. I also recall being told, when I went to take flowers to his grave again years later, that his body had been moved. His parents took his death hard and moved right after the funeral. At the time, it made sense that they may have moved him. It took a long time, but I eventually stumbled across the articles and records, I was wildly off regarding the date of death. He died in Town B and was buried in City C. Now, Town B has a smaller, less well-equipped hospital and it's further away than a better facility in City A. It seemed odd when I read it that they would transfer a critical patient to Town B Hospital. My husband agreed. Not long after that though, I ran into a mutual associate of Brad and I who had gone to the funeral in City C and confirmed that he was buried there. This was all very weird, but I wrote it off as yet another example of my scrambled brain. Now, it turned out the reason that I had started to think about Brad was because it was coming up on his 50th birthday. When my 50th birthday came up, the same nagging feeling reappeared and I ended up revisiting the articles. To my surprise, I found a listing for a second grave, this time in Brisbane. His full name, date of death, and birth on two different headstones, one in City C and one in Brisbane, both existing concurrently, photographed and on a very prominent website. I presumed I just missed the second grave when I was searching the first time. This made me doubt my original memories less. It made the scenario I recalled seem more likely. A few months later, I was telling a friend about the whole saga and went to show her the two graves. The grave in City C was gone and in its place, a listing for Town D, a place about 800 kilometers away from my hometown, and the Brisbane grave remained. I was shocked. My husband, likewise, but neither of us had an explanation. In the absence of any kind of answer, the matter faded to the back of my mind. Tonight, the teenage friend of my nephew suddenly died. My nephew is about the same age as I was when Brad passed. Feeling nostalgic, I went to Brad's grave online to pay my respects. As of tonight, Brad's place of death is listed as Sydney, and the Brisbane grave is now gone. I don't know what to make of this. Three other people can corroborate that I have not imagined or misunderstood the changes, so I know it's not my memory. 
Brad's parents both died well before his 50th birthday, and his sister had permanently moved to the UK before they died. I'm just confused and unsettled by this. Here's the TLDR. An old school friend of mine who died in the 80s has had three places of death, a funeral in the wrong place and too many grave locations, and two at once at one point. This submitter includes an edit to include, I want to thank everyone who took the time to interact. While I don't have any certainty and it doesn't explain anything, I actually have some ideas about what may be going on. Another user encouraged me to go recheck the official record which wasn't available when I first went looking. I double checked the death record for the other victim of the accident and they also have the same disparity with their headstone and the official record. As another user pointed out to me, there may have been corruption involving regarding government liability. Re-examination of the facts make me wonder if other official mistakes may have also been made. I looked into why the date on the death certificate may have been changed. There was significant changes in legislation around that time. The movement of the date would have resulted in an almost negation of the public's ability to scrutinize government actions. Basically, it threw a 30-year lid on even being able to identify that the records existed. It occurred to me that other parts of what happened may be related to the child's sexual abuse. My friend and other victim were very similar. They were a similar age, their fathers had the exact same job, and vaguely resembled each other. Brad was one of those no enemies kind of folks and the other dude could make an enemy in an empty room. Given how long ago this was, I feel like someone may have mixed them up and may be trying to take upon the family of their abuser or their bully. It's being missed because Brad has no living family in Australia currently. I heard about this subreddit through a neighbor who urged me to share our story. This happened this summer at a barbecue I had with some of the neighbors on our street. Typical hot dogs, hamburgers, potato salad. I had made a comment to my next door neighbors about how I should have made a green salad, but the heat wouldn't permit, and this is important to remember later. The afternoon carried on as normal, and when the sun started to set, I suggested we get a game of cornhole going. I have a board that I painted myself at close in the dark with LED lights around the board, and the bags also glow, four pink and four green. We paired up and separated the bags four green and four pink. After three rounds, the other team is up by three points, and now it's my turn. I throw my first bag, which is pink, and boom, it sinks perfectly into the hole. You could see the pink illuminate through the hole clear as day. The other team lets out a typical ugh sound, and my partner and I, along with the neighbors who were just watching, all cheer. We continue taking turns throwing our bags and the match ends. As the other side starts to collect the bags, I see them both look around for my pink bag that I made directly in. They can't find it anywhere. There are no kids or pets to blame, and I thought that maybe the other person jokingly hid the bag. They both tell me that they hadn't touched it and looked equally as confused. Now, all of us spend the next 20 minutes searching my tiny backyard, dumping the trash can out, looking in the neighbor's yard for the bag, but to no avail. The bag was never found, so we called the game and figured we would just find it later. We all exchanged that strange kind of faces with each other because if you've ever played cornhole, you know when a bag sinks into the hole, there really isn't any other place it would go besides under the board. But whatever, I brush it off and I start to tidy up a bit, clearing plates and emptying cups, when I notice the table with all the food on it, and right in the center is a freaking salad. Did someone come late and bring the salad? I'm just standing there when I notice that not only is there a salad, but it's in one of my salad bowls. I'm floored. I don't want to sound crazy so I casually ask each neighbor if it was them that brought the salad, and they all said no. 
The neighbor I had made the comment to about making a salad, but knowing that it wouldn't be good in this weather, remembered me saying that and seeing the bowl but never paid attention to what was in it. As the night ended and I'm cleaning up the rest of the mess, I decide to look again for the bag and never find it. My friend is inside washing dishes and asks me whose salad bowl this belonged to. I had figured maybe I did make a salad and just forgot, so the bowl was mine, except when they went to put it away, my exact same bowl was already in the cabinet. I just stood there, stunned. I mean, how could that be? They even had the same tiny piece of the price sticker on the bottom of the bowl that no matter how hard I scrubbed, couldn't come off, and that clear, sticky part remained. I'm a logical thinker. I truly believe everything can be explained away somehow, so I still tell myself that this has to be the case. Maybe the bag got picked up on accident. Maybe I had bought two bowls that were identical and just forgot. But no one claimed the bowl or found the bag, so it'll always leave this little doubt in my mind about what really happened that day. I took my son with me to the office yesterday because he didn't have school. He brought his backpack with snacks and his phone inside it. He was carrying the backpack with him when we left the house. I made sure he had it because his phone charger and all the stuffs that he needs is in there. Stuffs. We get to the office. He takes his jacket off, sits by one of the computers, and places the backpack beside him. I've seen him going on his phone, which was in the backpack. Later, around 3 p.m., we couldn't find his backpack. We panicked because we thought somebody stole it and his phone was inside it. We asked around the office and they didn't see it after 3 p.m., but they remembered him having the backpack that morning. We kept looking and couldn't find it. We realized it probably got stolen when he wasn't looking. There were a lot of kids coming in and out for trick-or-treating. We leave the office and go home. I unlock the house. I go in my room and his backpack is sitting on the bed with all of his stuff inside it, including his phone which he was using today. There are texts and a couple of social media interactions he made using the phone, so we know he had both the backpack and the phone that same day. We're shocked. We tried to rationalize it as much as possible, but there's no way he never brought it with him. There's concrete proof that he did such and there's eyewitnesses. I mean, he even remembered having his phone too. Other people saw it, and there was texts alongside other social media interactions that couldn't have been possible without him having the phone. This is the first time something like this has ever happened to me, and I don't know how to feel about it. About 10 years ago, while I was living in San Francisco, my roommate and I drove to Hayward to watch a movie with a friend who lived there. To get to Hayward from San Francisco, you have to cross the San Mateo Bridge. I had driven that bridge what feels like a million times, so I'm super familiar with how long it takes to get across it. It was a late movie, and we didn't get out until a few minutes before midnight. We said our goodbyes and started driving back home to the city. My roommate was driving, and as we were on the San Mateo Bridge, I was just enjoying the radio, feeling super content and relaxed. Suddenly, I had this deep feeling that we'd been driving for a very long time. Too long. It felt like we'd been driving for hours. There weren't many cars on the bridge at that hour, and I surveyed my surroundings. The bridge just stretched on before us. Then, my roommate spoke up and asked me if it felt like we'd been driving for way too long on the bridge, and my stomach sank. We turned the radio off, and I swear to you, the clock said 1.20 a.m. We had somehow been driving on that bridge for over an hour. We freaked out and became hyper-vigilant. I told my roommate, who was driving, to stay calm and I was sure we'd be off the bridge soon. Sure enough, the hill on the bridge came up that you drive over to get off the bridge and into Foster City. 
We sped home to our town home at like 90 miles an hour after we got off the bridge. That bridge does not take over an hour to get across. I truly feel like we had gotten stuck in some time loop on that bridge crossing the bay, and when we finally realized what was happening, we snapped out of it. And no, we didn't drink or take any drugs. Has this happened to anyone else? Maybe even on the same bridge? This happened to me in 2020. I was in the kitchen having some snacks. I was all by myself at home, and my parents would usually come home from work around 6 p.m., I was working in the home office due to lockdown, so I was used to the routine of my parents coming back at that time and hearing their car and their noises. When it was around 6.10 p.m., I heard the garage door open and the car entering, followed by the sound of the keys opening the door and my parents talking about some things about my grandma. I stayed where I was, expecting them to enter the kitchen in any second, but then all went silent. I found that very strange. They were always loud while talking, so the sudden silence made no sense. I left the kitchen expecting to find them, but the house was empty and quiet. I panicked and checked all the rooms, and they were all empty as well. I checked the garage, and the car wasn't there either. I got terrified, but tried to calm down. Thirty minutes later, they arrived, and I rushed to them, and it was actually them arriving for real this time, and they were also talking about my grandma. I told them what happened and they said that the traffic was awful, so they just got home late. They must have been on the San Mateo Bridge. I still have no idea what happened that day. I was just sitting on the couch and my partner grabbed a half-eaten kebab from the fridge to heat up in the microwave. Our kitchen and living area are in the same big room. I saw him put it on a plate, put it in the microwave, and turn the thing on and we chatted for a little bit while he waited. When it was finished, he opened the microwave to find it empty. Now, he has Haiti HD and can be forgetful, but I'm pretty good at finding things and remembering where things are, so when I tell you that we were both freaking baffled, we both ended up searching everywhere from the freezer to the dishwasher to the shower and it's just, it's gone. This all happened within three minutes and there's no way it could have been eaten or put anywhere else in those few minutes. We even microwaved something else to make sure our microwave didn't just spontaneously turn into a wormhole or something. Maybe a higher dimensional being was kind of hungry. Either way, we're both thoroughly confused and he just wants his damn kebab, but apparently the universe had other ideas today. I just hope it didn't glitch into another place in the house to rot over time in secret. This one is one of the few glitch stories that actually has a resolution. After they posted this story, they found the kebab. Here's the update. They say, we found it in the cupboard in the spot where the plates go. So, that's that, I guess. We love a good happy ending. A couple of years back, when my youngest brother was still young, he was obsessed with Darth Vader. My dad owned a couple of Legos and, after many requests from my brother, gave him his one rare Darth Vader Lego figure. My little brother was ecstatic, but my father told him sternly to take good care of it because that one was expensive and it was one of a kind. That day, my oldest brother and my youngest were messing around playing with Legos and, for whatever reason, they decide to take a break and then come back. Well, my little brother comes back crying about how his Darth Vader Lego is gone, and at first, they both searched around the little area that they were playing, and nothing. The search expands as my little brother gets more and more desperate so our dad doesn't get angry at him. Me and my sister begin to search around the house. We check the most obscure areas. 
I mean, aren't things always either in the most obscure or most obvious places, but it's nowhere. Not on the bunk bed, the floor, the counter, the drawers. It's nowhere. Eventually, Dad finds out, and he's a little disheartened that it's lost, but tells everyone to start looking harder. Eventually, Mom is looking too. And we're like this for a good 20 minutes, and then we all group back together in a circle in the living room in defeat. We stand in that circle for a moment of silence as we think of where to look next, but that silence is cut short by a small clack. All of a sudden, our eyes are on the black Darth Vader Lego on the floor in the center of our circle. The silence doesn't break for a moment. We look up at the bare ceiling, and then we start talking in a frenzy, trying to piece together what just happened. There was no incentive for any member of my family to hide this Lego. My elder brother is a prankster, but he was standing in the circle with us, and we would all want my little brother to be at ease. Plus, how? And the timing was impeccable, by the way, right when all hope was lost. Some of the comments on this story include somebody that says, Did you say thank you? <laughs> And then the OP says, I got on my knees, tears welling in my eyes, and I thanked my ceiling fervently. <laughs> if you're watching this on YouTube, then hit the like button. And if you're listening on a podcast, then leave a review. I'll see you in the next one.